Well, hello, thank you for joining us online today. You know, one of the prayers at the house from the very beginning has been whether or not you come here in person or you join us online, that the house wouldn't be a place that you go to church or a place that you call church, but a place that you call home, that we truly consider you family. And if you'd like to connect with us, you can go to thehousepv.com or follow us on, on social media. We're at Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We're right now. Let's go to today's message. We hope that you like it. Well, good morning, house family. How's everybody doing? Oh, well, happy New Year's. Anybody excited to be in the house of the Lord today? Yeah, me too, man. I was loved like the psalmist said. I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. Happy New Year. Man, hey, is anybody excited for the new year? Oh, yes, I know I'm excited about the new year. You know what I love about the new year? Is that regardless how 2018, regardless how the previous year went, whether it was good, whether it was bad, it doesn't matter, but you have the ability, we have the resources, we have the power, we have the Holy Spirit to make 2019 in 20 times, 100 million times better than 2018. Can I get an amen? amen. And see, some of you are like, man, dude, you know, I had such a horrible 2018 and anything would be better in 2019. And some of you are like, man, 2018, it was an amazing year. I have no idea how it can be any better. I'm here to tell you it can because we serve a God who's a God of the past, present, and the future. Can I get an amen? He has nothing but the best for his children. He is a God of the possibility and not the impossibility. Hear this. He's a God who walked on water. He's a God who made the sun stand still for Joshua. He's a God who planted and split the seeds for Moses. He's a God who rose Jesus from the grave. And because of that, Jesus lives inside of me and you. 2018 is going to be nothing that's going to be cared. Like 2019 is going to be a year of breakthrough in your life, man, that he, God's going to restore to you. In 2018, if it was bad, he's going to restore your heart, your soul, and your mind. And if 2018, it was amazing, he's going to bless it 30, 60, 100 fold. Come on, if you believe that, stand to your feet. Make a public declaration right now. Stand to your feet. Put your hands together. Tell somebody 2019 is going to be a breakthrough year. Look at somebody say, no, New year, baby. New you. New year, new you, baby. Now listen, before you, I didn't say sit down yet. Y'all didn't have to follow instructions. Before you sit down, you're going to go find somebody. And you got to go look them eye and say, listen, this is going to be the best year yet. Then you can sit down. Go. Man, man, I am fired up. I am excited about 2019, uh, not only for what God's going to do in the house church, but for what I believe God is going to do in your personal, individual lives. Uh, listen, if you are new to our church, if you guys will give me a moment, I just want to go ahead and invite you to week one of our growth track, uh, which is today at 2 p.m. If you didn't know, we designed our church around four things, believe, belong, become, and be the church. See, we just believe that, that everybody should start off with having an intimate, personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And that's exactly what happens at salvation. So we exist that everybody would come to believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. And then we also just think that part of believing is having a place to belong to. Uh, that, that not just a place that you go to church or you call church, but as Josh said, a place that you could call home, that we believe that everybody needs a group of people to belong to that you can do life with outside of church. And I also want you to know, we say this is a place that you don't even have to believe to belong. You don't, because this is a, I know that all faith starts with doubt. I do. And if you're not a believer, why don't you say that's okay? You're welcome here. I'm going to hug you just like I hug any of these other crazy people in this place. It's all good. But this is a safe place that you can come and test the teachings and claims of Jesus for yourself without fear of judgment. Without fear of judgment. And then we just think after we give our life to Jesus Christ, then he wants us to become everything that he created us to be. Can I get an amen? amen. And that's how he wants us to discover our purpose. And that's the fourth part, which is be the church to make a difference. We don't believe that you were just put on this planet to breathe air, to take up space. I don't believe that you're just called to go to job, go to your work and pay your bills. I don't believe that you're just called just to go to, 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 go to, uh, to basketball games and football games. No. See, I believe God has called you to find freedom in your life so you can make a difference and you can help somebody else get freedom in their life. Can I get an amen? 
So we believe Believe Along would come and be the church. And if you just want more information about, man, you can come to our church. You know, we don't have a membership here. We just have an ownership. Ownership. What that means is, man, if you choose to call this place home, I just ask you to take ownership of it like you do your own home. Water the grass. Come mow the grass. <laughs> Pick up trash. No. Just take ownership of it. God's the one who owns you. We're members of his family, not any one building. Not any one building at all. But if you just want more information, we want you to come. But we also, if you do want to get involved, we also, the only thing that we ask that you go, we ask you to go to those three classes. I just believe that if you're going to invest your time, money, and your family here, you should know the mission and vision of the church. I just do. I want you to know how we operate. We have a government. It's just not ran by me. We're transparent with the finances. I want you to know how we do finances around here. I think that's important. We also, I want you to help discover your purpose. How many know that God has given you gifts and talents to make a difference in this world that you live in today? We want to help you discover that. And then we want to go a step further is we actually want to help give you an opportunity to use those gifts and talents to make a difference. How many of you know that every single one of you are a 10 in some area? Some of you wish you could sing like me, but you can't. I'm sorry. It's not your gifting. But our heart is to help you find that 10, that area, whatever it is. And so we made, we can, the, our growth track comes the first three Sundays uh, of, every, of every month. It's taught at 2 p.m. It's taught by somebody in our church. And again, you know what? If you want to know what our dream team is, our dream team is made up over 120 men and women right now that are sacrificing their time, their commitment, their dedication to help make the house church work. So will you guys, will you just help me celebrate our dream team just to say thank you so much for what you guys do. You're amazing. I know we're, we're on staff. We have a staff, but I want you to the staff. We think you guys are the real heroes. You work 40, 60, 80, 100 hours a week, and you still come and volunteer your time, your money, and your energy. I'm here to tell you, God's church, God's kingdom does not work without men and women willing to sacrifice for the kingdom of God. And I celebrate you, and I just want to say thank you so much for willing to take time out of your life to help make the house church what it is. <clears throat> so pretty much today, this whole series, we're going to be going over our third series. We're starting today our 21 days of prayer and fasting. Remember, if you didn't get your prayer guide in your prayer journal, please pick that up. Uh, and it's going to be a powerful time. Uh, it's a powerful time. So this whole series, we're going to be going over pretty much our third part of our mission. Because uh, as Pastor Jake shared, how many of you guys got to hear Pastor Jake last week? Did he do an amazing job? Was Hey, give it up for Jake. Dude, he's amazing. <clears throat> Brother can preach. But as he shared last week with you guys, we're a little over a year and a half old. There's been over 300 people give their life to Jesus Christ. Y'all should, y'all, there's no reason you shouldn't be clapping about that either. 300 people, lives are laid in the rainbow of the life. Man, their lives have been changed in a year and a half. And, and many of those people still call this place home. And because of that, not only me, but I believe all of us, we need to go to the next step. We truly believe that God wants to take us on a spiritual journey, a next process. And every single one of us have given our life to Jesus Christ. And I think we need to go to the next step, which is simply find freedom in your life. How many know you're saved, amen? But before you were saved, you probably lived a lifestyle that just wasn't the best in the world. And every single one has created these addictions, these strongholds in our life that maybe you're saved going to heaven, but it's this one thing that is keeping you from living the life that God has called you to live. And I believe 2018 is gonna be a year of break for you in that area, amen? And listen, and this is why. You know the devil isn't scared and isn't upset that you got saved? He's not. He, he, he's not scared that you come to church and you lift your hands and you sing some songs and, man, he's not scared that you pay your tithes. You know what he's scared of and what he doesn't want? He doesn't want you to find freedom in your life. He doesn't want you to get set free from the stronghold and the addictions in your life because he knows that if he can keep you focused on you, if he can keep you focused on the junk in your life, then you're not going to help anybody else get free from their junk. You know what? He knows you're saved. That's okay. He's lost that battle. He just doesn't want you to take somebody else with you. Now, I believe that. I understand that. That is why you want to be set free because God has a plan for his church. And understand when you're so locked in bondage and the stuff in your own life, he says, you know what, man, if I can just get them locked, and I know every time they pray, they're going to pray for themselves. It's going to be what he can do for what God can do for me. If I can keep them locked in their bondage, when it comes to the church, everything they do is going to be about how the church can serve them and what the pastor can do for them and what they can do for them instead of how we can serve his church. See, that's the, that's the ploy, that's the trick of the enemy. And God says, man, I've come to give you guys breakthrough in your areas, in your lives for that. And that's why back in, in August, I started praying and fasting. If you didn't know, yeah, we plan for right now, but we prepare for the future. 
Always. We have foresight. I am always looking not to where we're at. God, where do you want the church to be in three months? Where do you want the church to be in a year? Where do you want it to be three to five years? Because it's not my church. It's his church. He's the one that's leading this show. And it's my job to lead the church through certain seasons. And I started, God, where do you want the church to be in 2019? What's going on? God, give me a word, Lord. Lead me to some scriptures. What is it? And a couple months ago, God spoke a word into my spirit and breakthrough. Everybody say breakthrough. Breakthrough. Oh, man, y'all ready to preach. You ready? Y'all gonna help me preach today, all right? Breakthrough. I was like, dude, God, that's awesome. God said 2019 is going to be a breakthrough year for my church. And remember, he's not talking about a building. The church is the people. He spoke to my shirt, Brandon, this is going to be the year that everything that the enemy stole from my people, I'm going to restore it back to them. Can I get an amen? I'm going to restore it back to my people. And I said, that's cool, God. Well, I just can't get up a bunch of people and say breakthrough. They're going to be like, well, how are we going to do it? God, I need some scriptures. Leave me. Go. Everybody turn to Joel. <clears throat> Joel 2, man, y'all, I preach. I lost my voice last service, but I'm bringing it again, man. <laughs> Joel 2, 12, it says, now, therefore, says the Lord, turn to me with all your heart. See what God is saying? There's many people that have turned away from God. You don't even know you turned away from God. And he's telling us, turn, turn back to me with all your heart. Listen, we got through the holidays now. Everybody's done committing gluttony every meal. Everybody's done making about the eggnog and the presents and everything. And God said, listen, return to me. Turn back to me. Therefore, turn to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping, with mourning. He's saying, humble yourself. And they go down to verse 25. And he says, so I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the crawling locust, the consuming locust, and the chewing locust, my great army, which I sent. If you're, if you're going by the NLT, the New Living Translation, it says that God is going to give back what you lost. God's going to give back what you lost. And then last week, Pastor Jake, uh, he preached on 2 Chronicles. He mentioned 7.14. And God began to, and I'm going to show you how, how all this stuff comes in together. It says, then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and restore their lands. So I want to go back. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. What God is saying is, they know my people for way too long, they have been Lord of their life instead of me Lord of their life. There's been people that have made their marriage their Lord. They've made their kids their Lord. They've made their job their world. they made their vacations their Lord. they made their money the Lord. And God is saying, if my people who will humble themselves, pray and seek my face, what he's saying, if my people will put me as Lord in their life, quit playing games with me, quit making me as part of their life, and make me the life of them. Make me as Lord of their life. And then go as it says, and turn from their wicked ways. And I don't want you to focus on that because that has to do with behavior. Because the one word that God revealed to me in that was obedient. Everybody say obedient. obedient. So God says, people will who put me as Lord of their life and be obedient to my name, be obedient to my voice. He says, then I will hear from heaven and I will hear their land and I will hear them and I will restore you. So God's spoken to me in 2019. I'm speaking to you. 2019 is going to be a breakthrough year for you. It's going to be a year of restoration. It's going to be a year of reconciliation. 2019 is going to be a year that we get back our minds. We get back our health. We get back relationships that have been broken. 2019 is going to be a breakthrough year with you. Can I get an amen? Somebody get your hands together. Man, you act like you got it all figured out. It's going to be a year of reconciliation. Listen, the devil stole some things from us, and it's time for us to take it back. To take it back. And God said, my people who will put me first and foremost in their life, be obedient to me. I will heal their hearts, their marriage, their land, their soul. I will give them everything that the enemy stole from me. Now, listen, guys, I'm not some hype preacher. I'm just not here trying to emotionally stir you up to where you leave here and all excited. Yeah, that was great. Listen, I believe this stuff. I believe that God has an abundant free life for you to live. Jesus says, I have come that you might have life and have it to the abundance. Again, you deserve to wake up happy. You deserve to wake up not, not full of depression and sick. You deserve to be healthy. You deserve to walk in victory. You know why? Because your Jesus died for you. He bled for you. He went to battle for you so you could have freedom in your life to live the life that he's always called you to live. But you got to believe it. you got to believe that this year can be better and different than any year before. You've got to believe that one struggle, that one addiction, man, that you can be set free from it. Because that's exactly what Jesus has called us to do. Some people are like, well, Pastor Brandon, you know, if, man, if I can just survive 2019, I'll punch you in your head. <laughs> Change your thinking. 
Don't say, I'm just going to survive, but I'm going to thrive in 2019, baby. I'm coming at you, devil, like a spider monkey. So you coming at me? I'm coming at you. It's all about perspective and attitude. Going at the enemy. I'm going to thrive. You know, and we're going to be uh, unrolling a lot to you guys in 2019. There's a lot of exciting things that's going to happen at the church. We're going to do it over a period of time because if we did it at one day, you would, you'd be overwhelmed like I am. So... But one thing that we did is we put together a sermon prep team. Uh, I want you to know that this church has never been about one person. From the very beginning, we had, it was not based. People say, well, isn't it about the pastor? No, it's not. God never intended the church to be about one man. We all are part of the body. We all have different gifts and talents. And understand this, when you all use the gift and talent that God gave you and you just do your part, that's when the kingdom of God works the best and the most fruition. So I've asked, along with our staff, some of my friends, people that I know are gifted, they have a heart, they pray, they fast, they understand, they have the time to meet with me. I said, listen, I want you guys to meet, and I want us to lay out. I want you guys to help me bring out, get out of me what God has spoken to my spirit because it's so big, I don't know how to do it. And we met, and I started sharing this with those guys in my heart, and all God wants to do. And it was amazing. We met, and in three hours, we came up with this whole series. We outlined a whole year of sermon series, calendars, and events. And I'm here to tell you, if you've never made church a priority in your life in 2019, you need to make it a priority because we're going to bring it every Sunday. We're going to bring life-changing messages every Sunday. You need to bring your notebooks. You need to bring your Bible. I'm telling you, 2019 is going to be a breakthrough year in your life. It's never, I don't care about fame. I don't, listen, I don't want you to follow me. I want you to follow God. You know what? God never intended the pastor to be your God. No, he never intended for Sunday just to be your only experience. He said, yeah, come experience me, but walk with me the rest of your life. Let me be the Lord of your life. I'm telling you, anything that we preach that doesn't line up with the word of God, just kick it to the side. But we're going to bring some life-giving stuff to you guys every Sunday. And I'm going to show you how cool this is because I said, all right. I want to do a breakthrough series. I want to be about deliverance. God told me it's going to be a breakthrough. I want to start the new year laying a good foundation. Start talking. I said, okay, we need a title. And they said, well, how about limitless? And I said, that's stupid. (laughs) No, I didn't say, but I was like, what does that have to do with breakthrough? And I want to show you how the Holy Spirit, remember, the word God put into me was two months ago. The scripture, 2 Chronicles of this last Sunday, we met with them. Limitless was two months ago. Now, I want you to reread this and put limitless into a spiritual context in Second Chronicles. It says, then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, people that will put me first and foremost in their life, people will be obedient to my name. Hear this, the word limitless, because we wanted you to know, the Holy Spirit wants you to know that when you're the Lord of your life, you are limited. But when he's the Lord of your life, you are limitless because you serve a God of unlimited resources. You serve a God of infinity resources. He is an omnipower, omnipresent. You serve a God who owns everything in the world. Again, you are limitless. And when you put God first and foremost in your life, You will have a breakthrough year in your life. You will have more freedom in your life than what you've ever experienced before. I promise you that. And what we did, we started breaking up. We're going to use a sports theme, a season. Who's familiar with sports? Oh, my gosh. We need to. Okay, thank you. Just wake up. It's 2019. Man. And we're using a sports theme because there's different seasons. There's a preseason, postseason. You know, there's game film, there's victory. So what we're going to do is this whole series, we're going to break down. We're going to put together a a plan for you guys, not to just have freedom in the next 21 days to a month, but how you can be free in February, in March, in April, May, in June, in July, and the rest of your life. See, today we're talking about the preseason. Next week, we're going to take a look at a game plan, and we're actually going to start breaking down film. We're going to start breaking down the film of your life and seeing the things that are gripping you. And then week number three, we're actually going to show you how to get freedom, the things that you can apply to help you get freedom from that. In the fourth week, we're going to show you how you can have victory for the rest of your life. Can I get an amen? You're not going to want to miss this series. You're not going to want to miss this series promise you the match. So we came up with that. Now, what I want to do now is I want to lay a, a foundation for you guys when it comes to deliverance, because many people have never heard that, that they can be free. Many people have never even heard. They think, well, man, I just get saved. Well, that's just the way I am now. I don't know why I'm jacked up, why I'm mad, why I'm sick all the time. I don't know. I have it. That's just me. Many people, they get freaked out about it when they hear about it. And a lot of because of the way man and how we have let our emotions take over and package things. 
So don't let me today, I want Jesus to start speaking into your spirit when the area of breakthrough and deliverance in your life. In Luke 4, 18 and 19, again, this is Jesus. He goes into the temple, and this is Luke's recount of it, and he opens up a scroll, and this is Jesus in Isaiah 51, but it's in Luke right now. And Jesus is going to say, the Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor, and he has sent me to proclaim, everybody say, freedom. Oh, okay, who in here has seen Braveheart? I want that type of freedom on the count of three. One, two, three. Freedom! Yes, see, church should be fun. Proclaim freedom in our life. He sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of the sight, not just your physical sight, but spiritual sight. There's some Christians you guys say, but you still have some spiritual blinders on you because you're still living a life that is contrary to what he wants you to live. There's some spiritual blinders and you have yet to understand it. And then it go on, it says, and to set the oppressed free to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. I'm here to tell you, 2019 is going to be the year of the Lord's favor on your life, on your marriage, and on your life. I'm fired up in 2019. And then it was so powerful, even after Jesus' death, after he sent it to heaven, you know they still talked about him? Acts 10.38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, the devil, the enemy, because God was with him. If you didn't know that Jesus had a deliverance ministry, 75% of Jesus' ministry, he dealt with driving demons out of people's life, jacked up people. And I think with the reason why when we hear deliverance, we get freaked out because we, we think of the exorcism of Emily Rose. We think of somebody demonic possession and their eyes going in the back of their head and their head spinning around like Beetlejuice. And <laughs> And, and levitate and being thrown all over the place and we get freaked out. Listen, no, 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 deliverance for you, deliverance for me, deliverance for normal people because we all have something, we all have addictions, we all have struggles, things that are keeping us from living the life that God has called us to live and Jesus came to set you free. He came to set you free. 2019 is going to be a breakthrough year. First John 3, 8. It says the reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. And again, that's not just in the world. That's in your individual life that he's came to destroy. He's God has came to give back what the enemy has robbed you from. Who? that's good stuff. And I'm telling you, anytime you accompany a breakthrough series, the deliverance series, along with prayer and fasting, oh, you have no idea the power that God has given us. And when you accompany a series like this with prayer and fasting, listen, I want to encourage you. I want to challenge you to join us for 21 days. Be part of it. Choose to do something different than what you've done before. Don't, don't say the, the saying that if, if you don't choose to do something different, you're always going to get what you always got. Just choose to do something different. Join us for 21 days. Do a food fast. I think everybody should do a food fast. If it's not food because some people have, have issues, but I think we all should do some type of food fast. Listen, every single one of us could benefit by, not, by getting off of sugar for 21 days. Yep. Couldn't we? Yep. It does. Sugar causes cancer. Scientific proof. Every single one of us could benefit from getting off of it. But if it's not food, I want to encourage you to do some type of media fast. Do, do something. Do, do something that, that, that is taken back, that, that is stealing, that is robbing you. You do some type of media fast, whether it's your, whether it's your cell phone, whether it's social media, what it is, and then I'm going to encourage you to join us on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Well, not Saturday. Yeah, all of them, but 6.30 to 7.30. Join us here. We're going to see God's face Wednesday. It's going to be Facebook Live, 12.30 to 1, and we're going to, we're going to archive it for 24 hours. So if you can't get here on that lunch, you can have it to do it at home. Saturday from 9, from 9 to 10 a.m., we're going to worship God. We're going to pray. We're going to seek his face, and we're going to pursue it. Why? Because we want something different. We want freedom in our life. We want to get set free, and that's what happens. Join us because whenever you pray and you fast, you do two things at the same time. You weaken your soul and your body, and you strengthen your spirit. And when you get rid of all the stuff that is bringing you down, all the junk that the enemy's feeding you, then you can actually get freedom in your life. But you got to choose to do something different. Amen. I truly believe 2019 will be a year of breakthrough, but you have to lay a good foundation for it. You started just by being here. You got you to at least make it to the first one in order to make it to all of them. Can I get an amen? amen. To applaud you for getting here. 
So now let's go on. So we laid the foundation. Deliverance is real. We all got addiction. Jesus came to set you free. He just didn't come to die so you can go to heaven, live like hell, and go through hell like. He wants you to be free in 2019 in your life because he has something for you to do. We know that. You can't deny it. Now we're going to go on. Well, how do anybody know how we do this? Nobody? Okay. Thank you. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5 is our main verse for this series. It said, for though we live in the world, and you do, we all live in the world, it says we do not wage war as the world does. See, we, we wage war with guns, with fighting, with bombs, with anger, with hatred, with racism, socialism. We fight the world. That's how the world fights. It says, you know what? We're in a world, but we're not supposed to fight like that. Verse 4 says, the weapons we fight with are the weapons or the weapons we fight with are not of the weapons of the world. On the contrary, on the contrary, see the weapons that God gave us, those weapons are from him and they have divine power. They are spiritual weapons that God has given us that you need to know about and you need to know how to use them. Many people don't know about it and many people don't even know how to use it as a weapon. So because of that, they're not living true freedom in Jesus Christ. And we're gonna teach you how to do that. Why? Go on. They have divine power to what? Demolish strongholds. That's what this whole series is about. Strongholds. That's what this whole month is about. It's about there are things that are gripping us, things that are holding us, things that are keeping us from living a life that God has for us. You're saved. You're going to heaven. And you're probably living in 95% that you have victory in your life. But there's that one area, that one thing that is keeping you from living life. The way, and God says, listen, man, I want to set you free from that in Jesus' name in 2019. You know, maybe it's in an addiction. Maybe it's in a habit. Maybe it's in your anger. Maybe it's your emotions. Some of you are a bunch of control freaks. Maybe it's in your lust. Maybe it's in your greed. But listen, we all have an area of something that God wants us to set free in the name of Jesus. Every year, and many people, even at the beginning of of the year, there are many people that, how many of you guys like me have, you start in the gym and someone start losing weight, and within a couple of days, you're done? Hmm. No. See, there are many people that every year, they say, this is going to be the year I'm going to be set free from that addiction or that whatever is going on, that stronghold in my life. And within a couple of weeks, months, or a couple of days, they're even back doing it again, and they've given up, and they said, listen, this is is just going to be me. This is how I am. Listen, that's going to be different in 2000 because this is how we're going to do it. Number five, we're going to demolish arguments and every pretension. You can even put the word pretend there or lie. We're going to dis- every, that's where you get the word pretend is from, pretension. We're going to demolish every argument, every pretension, every lie that has set itself up against the knowledge of God. See, the enemy has lied to you, and you have believed a lie, and the enemy has spoke something over you, not just about your overall law, but the enemy has spoke something into you, and God has a truth about you. See, God sees you in a way that you don't see you, but God says, I need you to see yourself the way that I see you, and we're going to do this by the next part, and we do this by taking captive every thought and making it obedient to Jesus Christ, amen? Making it obedient to Jesus Christ. It's the lies. A stronghold is a lie. Webster's Dictionary says what a stronghold is. It says it's a fortified place, a place of security and survival. So what has happened? The enemy has created a fortress around our lives with deception. And now when there's a bunch of Christian saves going to heaven, but they're walking around defeated, they're walking around with addictions and bondage and stronghold and things in their life that are keeping them. And basically what happens is because we have believed the lie, we have given authority to the liar. And all a stronghold is, uh, my, uh, this past Friday and Saturday, our staff, we got to hang out with our overseer, Pastor Kirk, and I was talking to him about this. And they see, all a stronghold is in somebody's life. It's somebody living life based off something that is not true that we are living a life based on something that was said to us that is not true. And see, what a stronghold does in your life, it makes you think that it has more power than what it actually does. Because all a stronghold, all an addiction in your life, it's a lie. It's a lie that has set itself up against the word of God. And instead of us going with the word of God, we have actually believed the lie of the enemy. He has deceived us. 
That's why Jesus came, remember, to destroy the work of the devil, to set the captive free, to set the, the gift sight to the blind. So what I do is I have four sermons, I have the next three sermons, and 21 days to convince you that you can have breakthrough in your life. But I need you to believe it. I believe it. I'm tired of the stuff in my life. There are things, I'm so hungry to be different. I'm so tired of things that are keeping me from being a better husband and a better dad. Things that are keeping me from being a better pastor and a, best, and a better leader. I'm believing for a breakthrough in my life, so I want you to know I'm on this journey with you as well. You've been, for some of you, you've been lied to for such a long time, you actually believe it and you've given up on it. Can I tell you, get back in the fight. Let 2019 be the year say, I'm going to get delivered from that addiction. It's not about a salvation. I'm telling you, Jesus came. He came and died for the past, present, and future sin. Addiction doesn't keep somebody out of heaven. But what it does, it, an addiction does keep you from living a life that he has for you. It keeps you focused on yourself and in that to where you can't help anybody else get free in your life. But he wants to get you free from that. Get back in the game. And we're going to do it by taking back our thought life. And we're going to set everything against the word of God. Can I get an Amen. Cool. So how do we do this? First of all, you need to come to your senses. We need to wake up, and you need to realize that there's an enemy that hates you. There is a devil out there. He came to still kill and destroy your life. You need to wake up and come to you that you have believed a lie because that stronghold is in your life. And I didn't say it. I proved it to you. Let's go to 2 Timothy 2.26. It says, and they will come to their senses. Jesus is saying, my church needs to come to their senses. You need to wake up. Get in the game. Quit being on the sidelines. He's saying, wake up. Come to their senses and escape from the devil's trap. There's an enemy out there to trap us. For they have been held captive by him to do whatever he wants. See, when we're being led by lies and stuff, the devil is actually having his way in our lives. And we don't even realize it. Jesus came to set us free from that. I get it, Pastor B. Man, how do I do this now? Man, listen. First, I want you to make it to the rest of this series. <laughs> I want you to join us for the 21 days of prayer and fasting. Choose to do it if you've never done it. But then I want you to get into the system. I want you to get plugged into the house church. We're a system. God, what I mean by that is, man, I want you to start off by attending a growth track today. It starts at 1 p.m. Discover your purpose. Learn how you can use that gift and talent to make a difference. All right? I want you to get involved in a family group in three weeks. Every single one of you needs somebody to do life with, not just on Sundays, but a group that you can do life with outside. Why? Because one can stand alone and be defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Yeah. You need some people to do life with. If you're waiting on me to meet all of your needs, I'm going to let you down. I'm one person to 600 people. You need other pastors, other people. Listen, I'm no more anointed than you. I'm no closer to God than you. Jesus is the same in me as he's in you. So when that means when somebody prays for you, if Jesus is inside of them, you don't need a pastor to pray for you. You need a man of God or woman to pray for you. You need a group to battle with you and go to bat for you. Some people that will be there for you. Again, and you watch. You watch. I don't have to give me a year. You know what? Don't even give me your, give me a semester of your life. Get plugged into the church. Get plugged into the system that is from the Holy Spirit. And I promise you, by May, you watch how different your life. If you don't have more peace, more love, more joy in your life, then I don't know. <laughs> but I've learned i got to be careful what I say from here. I'm just saying, look at me. You promise you. You applied a, a deliverance series with 21 days of prayer and fasting, and you get plugged in. You make him the Lord of your life. You're obedient to his word. It is his promise that he will give back what you lost. You'll have more joy, more peace, more love, more freedom in your life than what you've ever had before. I can get up here and say that because I can't do it, but the one living in you can do it. It's good preaching. Which leads to this. Who's on your team? Who's on your team? Who's the one feeding the lie to you? Or who's the one feeding the truth to you? Is it Facebook? <laughs> we all know that's true. <laughs> just a bunch of ad, just a bunch of angry, mad people putting their junk out there for people to read it. Oh, we all know, like, we get it from the news, right? Like Fox News is on somebody's, some people's team. 
Like, matter of fact, they'll believe more Fox News than they do the Word of God. Or CNN. For some people, it's CNN if you're on the other side of things. <laughs> or MSNBC. Who's on? You want me to tell you who needs to be on your team? God. You want me to tell you who can be on your team? The house church. And I'm not talking about the building. I'm talking about the men and women that call this place home, that understand there's deliverance coming, some people that have power of God, their spirit filled, that will go to bat for you. You need good people on your team. In the beginning of every preseason, that's what, that's what owners do. They shop around because they're trying to fill the best team. God gave you the best team, and it's called your brother and sister in Christ. Ah! <laughs> That's why I'll never have a big deal. Okay. So how are we going to do it? I want to give you three things. We'll give you three things of how you're going to get deliverance in your life. First of all, you have to take your thought life back. You have to take your thought life back. That's why 21 days of prayer and fasting is so huge. It's so huge. And again, I'm not just talking about the food fast. As we talk about it, I know it's difficult. But I think we need to do something else besides a food fast. I do. It's a media fast. I truly believe that. I think you should at least get rid of anything that, that brings you down. I do. You know, and for some people, for some it could be the news. It could be social media. It could be people. You know what? But some of it, it's unavoidable. You adults, you still have to go to work and honor your boss, even though you don't like them. <laughs> Teenagers, you still have to go to school and be around that bully. If you choose to call this place, oh, until I get fired, you still have to be around me. <laughs> but what you can do is you can guard your mind no matter what environment you're in. You can guard your mind. You need to guard your mind in that. Listen, you need to do everything in your power to take back your thought life. Listen, you can't win if you don't do it to an enemy that is in your ear the whole time talking. If all you're doing, if you're feeding your life 900 hours a day with social media and the things of this world, and you're spending two minutes of the word of God, how in the world do you think you're going to get set free? How in the world as a Christian are we going to walk in victory? The Bible says that your spirit and your flesh are constantly battling. And whichever one you feed the most is the one that's going to win. And if you're feeding your marriage and your life and your soul and everything with the things of the world, how in the world are we going to get set free? But God gave us the answer to it, and it's in his word of God. But you have to choose to do something different. That's why there's 21 days that creates new disciplines in our life. See, it's a discipline. It's a discipline in our life. Remember, second, the only thing 2 Corinthians talked about is how you need to take it back. You need to take the thought captive and make it obedient to Jesus Christ. Why? Romans 8, 5, and 6. Those who are dominated by the sinful nature, <laughs> those who, who are doing stuff you know God doesn't want you to do, you're living in sin. This is those who are doing that stuff. They think about sinful things. That's what your thought life is. You can't wait to sin. You can't wait to do that drug. You can't wait to deal with that addiction. You can't wait to get mad and angry. You feed off that stuff. And then Jesus says, those of you living, those who are controlled by the Spirit, they go to church, right? Nope. What's it say? They think. They control their thought life. Those who live for Jesus are controlled by the Holy Spirit. They think about the things that, the, that please the Spirit. He says, but if your sinful nature controls your mind, then there's death. It's not talking about physical death. It's a spiritual death. Your marriage, your hopes, your dreams, your love, everything, it will spiritually die because that is the very thing that is controlling your life. And then it says, but if the Holy Spirit controls your mind, there is life and peace. That's what participating in 21 days of prayer and fasting, it will slingshot you into 2019 and you'll lay a foundation for 2019 to be a breakthrough year and the best year you've ever had. Can I get an Amen. amen. Another, Romans 12, 2 says this, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. Don't look like everybody else. God has called you out of that, Christian. If you're a follower of Jesus Christ, you shouldn't look like somebody that doesn't follow Jesus Christ. You definitely shouldn't be participating in the things that they're doing. It says, don't conform any longer to the patterns of the world, but it says, but let God transform you into a new person by changing what? The way you think. You've got to take your cap off. You've got, to, you've got to take captive your thought life. You've got to take your thought life back. It's huge. And I'm telling you, if you want 2019 to be a breakthrough year, you have.
to get control of it. The second thing you have to do, family, you have to identify the lie. You have to identify the lie in your life. What is the area? What is the lie that the enemy has told you that has gripped you and that one thing that just won't let you go? You have to identify it. Again, you do it by taking it captive and making it obedient to Jesus Christ. John 8, 44. It says, when the devil lies, he speaks his native language. For he is a liar and he is the father of lies. He's a liar. And that's his goal is to lie, is to get you to believe his lie. He's told you stuff like you're not good enough. You're stupid. You're ugly. You're unworthy. He sold stuff to you like, well, that's just the way I am. Well, my dad was an alcoholic, so I'm going to be an alcoholic. My mom cheated on my dad, so I'm going to cheat on my, my, my husband. Uh, I think I said that right. You know what? God doesn't care about you. Matter of fact, it's God's fault that your life is so messed up because he loves them more than you. You know what? God's not even real. If he was real, why are those things going on in your life? You go to church, you tithe, you volunteer your time. Why is your life so hard? It's because God don't care about you. You have to identify the lie. You know what? Your husband doesn't like you. You know why your wife doesn't care about you? She's cheating on you. There's a lie. There's something you have to identify the lie that is in your life, and you have to take it captive, and you have to make it obedient to Jesus Christ. You want breakthrough in your life. You have to identify the lie. And then the third thing, what you have to do, you have to apply God's truth to the lie. The only thing that combats a lie is what? The truth. It's the truth. You have to put your new way of thinking into our minds. You have to apply it. You have to put it into your mind. There is no addiction that is too big for our God. Well, no, you don't. Well, but my daddy said, well, no, 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 you didn't hear me. There is no, there is nothing that is too big for our God. No, that addiction is too, no, you not listen to me. There is no thing that is too big for our God. You know what, that sexual sin in my life, it's just, it's too big. No, you're not listening. There's nothing too big for our God. You know, there's no way I can get set free. No, you're not listening. There's nothing that is too big for my God. Listen, there is absolutely nothing in this world that is too big for a God who went to the cross and died for you and bled against it. Hey, I came to set you free from that stuff in your life, but you have to believe it. You have to believe it. You have to get back into the game. And you have to be willing to do a little bit of work. And man, I want to be clear with you guys. I want to be clear with you. The Bible is more aggressive with this than what you think. It is. He is more aggressive with it. The Bible talks about spiritual warfare. And some of you are like, well, man, I didn't come from a church to talk like that. You know what? No, Brandon, I didn't sign up for that, dude. I'm not, I'm not ready to fight the devil. I just want to get saved and go to heaven. Well, then you've already, you've already believed the lie. And you're going to stay locked in your bondage. You're going to stay locked in your stronghold. And nothing different is going to change if you don't want to go fight the enemy. Well, pastor, can't you just not yell? And can't you just preach a little Jesus lamb? Jesus wasn't a lamb. The lamb was a lion, was a soldier. He didn't come as some weak being. He came to destroy the work of the devil. He came to open up a can on the devil. And he did it. And he did it. It is aggressive about this. And man, fellow, you need to wake up and realize you're in a war. You're in a war for your soul, for your life. You're in a war for your marriage, for your family, for your kids. There is a roaring lion looking for who he can devour out there. And these weak Christian stuff, people that just say, well, then I'm just scared. This deliverance stuff's not for me. I better stay away from that. No. Jesus saying, listen, and he talks about it as a warrior in the book of Ephesians. He explains it. In the book of Ephesians, it says, Ephesians 6, 10 and 18, finally be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. He better be Lord of your life. He better be strong in you. And then it goes up and it says, put on the full armor of God. That describes a warrior, a knight, a soldier. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take stand against the devil's schemes. The devil's coming at you with the schemes, lying, deceptions, trying to trap you. And Jesus is warning us, put on the full armor of God, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth. Put it on, go to battle. Take back what the enemy has stole from you. And this is my favorite how, take the sword of the spirit, 
which is the word of God. And we leave out the next part, the last part, which is what? Pray. You ever thought that God gave us a weapon called prayer? Not just the word of God, but praying. See, we've got to choose to do something different. If you're going to fight the devil, if you're going to get breakthrough in your life, if you're going to find freedom in your life, you're going to have to go to war. You're going to do it by reading God's word and praying. Praying. Better yet, this is the way I was taught, family. How you get victory in your life is by praying God's word. By praying God's word and using it as a weapon. And that's what we're going to teach you for 21 days. We're going to teach you how to pray. We're going to teach you how to walk in victory. We're going to teach you how to have deliverance in your life and get freedom from that stuff. But you got to be willing, you got to be wanting to do it. Can I get an amen? See, Luke, in closing, I want to end with something to some of you that think, listen, man, this is just too much for me. There, there's no way that I can be set free. Uh, this has been my whole life. There's just no way. Listen, Luke eleven twenty one. again, let Jesus speak to you. He says, when a strong man armed to the teeth stands guard in, in his front yard, his property is safe and sound. Yeah, that old devil might be in your front yard. He might be guarding you telling you, yeah, you're going to, that's just who you are. You're never going to amount to anything. You can't have freedom in your life. God doesn't love you. Yeah. Yeah, that old devil, but listen what? He might have a little bit of power, but how many you know he's not stronger than the Lord of the Lord and the King of Kings? And let's go to the next verse. It says, but what if a stronger man, hello, a stronger man comes along with superior weapons then he is beaten at his own game. The arsenal that gave him such confidence is hauled off and his precious possessions are plundered. Can I tell you, I don't care what your addiction is. The devil might have been coming at you. You might have been walked in fear, but in this 2019, 21 days of prayer and faster, there's a stronger man named Jesus Christ. He's showing up in your addiction. He's showing up in your stronghold. He's gonna set you free. He's gonna restore your heart. He's gonna restore your mind. He's gonna give you back everything that the enemy has stole from you. He's gonna restore relationships. He's going to reconcile relationships. He's going to renew your marriage. He's going to renew your heart. He's going to give you a confidence that you never had before. And then now when you start walking through 2019 and the enemy comes at you and he throws you, it's going to bounce off that, that chest and steel. Back up off me, devil. You know why? Because there's a God who's for you and he's not against you. There's a God who's fighting for you. He wants you to win. He wants you to be set free in Jesus' name. He wants you to be free. I am believing for 2019 to be a breakthrough year. How you do it, take your thought life. Take it back. Identify the lie in your life and then apply God's truth to it. Weaken your soul and your body. Strengthen your spirit. Next 21 days, and then I promise you your life will be different. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you and we thank you. If our prayer team will go ahead and come. God, we just confess that 2019, this is going to be the year that we get our minds back, our health back, our soul back. This is going to be the year that we walk in victory. God, because we're going to learn and we're going to apply your truth to our life. And we thank you for that. Well, again, thank you for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed today's message. You know, if you're someone and you gave your life to Christ, first, we just want to say congratulations. It's the best decision that you've ever made. We also would love to partner with you. And if you would email us at thehousepv at gmail.com, we would love to send you some information about what's next and help you walk out this journey. Also, be sure and go download the House app at the App Store. There you'll be able to find out information about giving and everything about what's going on at the House Church. Again, we hope you enjoyed today's message. We want you to remember that, that we believe in you, but more importantly, God believes in you.